Welcome to the third episode in a Legendarium series about the 12th century anarchy of medieval England. In this installment, Usurping the Crown, we will talk about how Stephen de Blois snatched the crown from his own cousin, the Empress Matilda. In November 1135, King Henry came down with a slight case of death. He would not recover. For the last three days of his life, he performed prayers and fasting upon his deathbed. He also forgave all his enemies before he breathed his last. The royal corpse was brought to Rouen, where embalmers cut out the brains, entrails, and eyes for burial in Normandy. The body was sprinkled with salt, wrapped in ox hides, and the remains sent back to England. The King of England would rest in both his homeland of Normandy and the Kingdom of England. With the death of King Henry I of England, the throne should have passed to his daughter, the Empress Matilda. Yet the barons of England and Normandy did not relish the idea of being ruled by a woman. Additionally, they feared the power of her husband, Geoffrey of Anjou, who knew not the customs of Norman England. Just as important, when news of Henry's death spread through England, Matilda remained in Anjou, as she had become pregnant with her third son, William, and could not risk a sea voyage. Not for the first time, Matilda lamented the fact that she'd been born a woman. During this fateful delay, the French-speaking barons of England fortified their castles. Successions often brought trouble as ambitious or vindictive men took advantage of lapses in royal continuity to become rich through plunder or settle scores with old rivals. On top of that, people wondered if a man would seize the throne, and that man turned out to be Count Stephen de Blois. Born in France during 1097 to Count Stephen Henry of Blois and Adela of Normandy, he was nephew to William the Conqueror himself. At the age of 10, he went to the court of his uncle, King Henry I, established himself as a royal favorite, and received lands and titles. In 1120, he avoided a fateful voyage on the doomed white ship with William Adelin because a bout of diarrhea kept him on land. A few years later, Count Stephen married a woman named Matilda, the daughter of Count Eustace III of Boulogne and Mary of Scotland, the daughter of King Malcolm III Canmore. A wealthy woman who claimed descent from two royal lines and an enthusiastic supporter of the Knights Templar, she would bolster her husband's claim to the throne, since any children they had would be of royal blood. Stephen himself was described as pious, chivalrous, charming, and handsome, good qualities for a king. At the time of Henry's death, Stephen lived on the continent. Upon receiving the news, Stephen journeyed across the channel in a long ship with a small retinue. Taken during the dead of winter, this proved a dangerous journey of thunderous storms, torrential rain, and towering waves. Nonetheless, Stephen's ship arrived safely in London on December 8, 1135, where Londoners turned out into the streets to cheer him. He hurried to Winchester, where his brother, Bishop Henry of Blois, turned the royal treasury over to him. Next, Stephen met with the Archbishop of Canterbury to discuss his coronation. The Archbishop noted that Stephen, like the other magnates, had sworn to support Matilda's claim to the throne three times. Several members of Stephen's retinue retorted that Henry recanted the oath on his deathbed, which freed Stephen from his pledge, very convenient for him. And so Stephen de Blois became King Stephen I on December 22, 1135. Yet the Empress Matilda and her husband Geoffrey Plantagenet had not given up their claim to the throne. She and her husband quietly made Anjou into a base from which she could invade Normandy and then England. While Stephen consolidated power, Matilda took control of three border castles, Argentine, Dumfron, and Exumar without force. 
and at least one of the nobles who swore loyalty to King Stephen, Earl Robert Fitzroy of Gloucester, an illegitimate son of King Henry, remained secretly loyal to the Empress Matilda. She found another supporter in her uncle, King David I of Scotland. He invaded the north of England, ransacking towns to finance the construction of Melrose Abbey. King Stephen led an army north in early 1136 and persuaded King David at sword point to return the lands he took in exchange for his son becoming the Earl of Huntington. Yet Stephen faced another challenge from Baldwin of Redverse, who seized the town of Exeter and installed his own garrison. In the summer of 1136, King Stephen hurried south. Upon seeing the royal standards, the citizens of Exeter threw open the gates to their king. Baldwin withdrew to Exeter Castle, built by William the Conqueror himself. The siege dragged on through the summer, with Stephen becoming personally involved in the fighting. Meanwhile, the defenders endured the hottest summer in living memory, which literally dried up their water supplies. Soon they had to use wine for drinking, cooking, and making bread. Finally, Baldwin chose to surrender. Bishop Henry, King Stephen's brother, urged him to put the garrison to death. Instead, King Stephen followed the rules of war and allowed the garrison to leave. Little did he know that Baldwin had already escaped to the Isle of Wight, where he had a navy that took him to Anjou, where he swore loyalty to the Empress Matilda. It would not be long before King Stephen's clemency would come back to bite him. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.